Welcome to the Sphinx of Baluchistan located in the south of Pakistan. Many have tried to debunk the formation, like Wikipedians, without carefully analyzing the situation. Stating that this structure is the result of natural formation and erosion, without looking any further, is very unscientific. It is spreading one's opinion and belief system on others like religions have done over the centuries. Is it truly a very ancient sphinx or not? We have analyzed the case and will present our results as a probability. Probability is not an opinion, it is a scientific fact. The area in which this sphinx is located was subject to many deformations over the millions of years. This area was also subject to heavy erosion. The latter might be one of the reasons why once well-crafted structures are now unrecognizable as one of humanity's marvelous ancient works. On top of that, it wouldn't be the first time that science, with archaeologists in the lead, made misjudgments fed from their fixed belief system. First a short introduction to our method. We have discovered, that orientations of ancient structures spread around the world, form a series of massive nodes that run over Greenland. It seems very likely that this is one of the main reasons why Greenland is still covered in ice, and that this is the reason why Greenland is irreversibly melting, i.e., its ice sheet was formed on the North Pole. Greenland was, by massive cataclysmic crustal deformations, forcefully pushed over the geographic North Pole. Not only Greenland's location was pushed around by these deformations, many other locations were moved as well. Antarctica is the only part of the crust that moved the least. The mechanisms that causes these deformations are currently under research by us. To judge whether the Sphinx of Baluchistan might be real, we have to look at orientational resemblances with the Great Sphinx in Egypt. The Great Sphinx in Egypt is cardinally oriented to our current geographic pole. And the Great Sphinx is looking eastward, in the direction of the rising sun at equinox. From this point of view, the Sphinx of Baluchistan must be cardinally oriented to our current pole, or be oriented to a much more ancient cardinal system, that of the poles 2 to 6. And it must be looking at an ancient eastward direction. The Sphinx of Baluchistan is not cardinally oriented, but is oriented to one of our poles, to be more precise, Pole 6. Is this Sphinx looking into the direction of the rising sun during the Pole 6 equinox? Yes, it is. That could be a significant resemblance. Pole 6 is an intriguing pole. It is mostly formed by ancient structures from Peru, Iraq, and oddly enough by an enormous collection of Roman amphitheaters. The age of this pole coincides with the dates that are mentioned in the Sumerian tablets, i.e., the Anunnaki that came to Earth around 430,000 years ago. The tablets tell us they landed in a region, Sumer, that is nowadays Iraq. Wonderfully enough, the orientations of many of the ancient structures in that region coincide with Pole 6, the pole that is according to our research, between 410,000 and 440,000 years old. Back to the Sphinx of Baluchistan. This incredible age, of between 410,000 and 440,000 years old, could explain the heavy erosion of the Sphinx. The probability for this sphinx to be oriented coincidentally to one of the poles 1 to 6 is around 25%. And the probability for the sphinx to be looking at east of the rising sun of one of these ancient poles is also 25%. The combined probability that this sphinx is coincidentally looking at the rising sun of one of these six poles is 6.3%. The probability that this is truly an ancient sphinx is 93.7%, which is high enough to be taken very seriously. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. Please share it with your friends and followers, and let us know what you think below in the comment section. One last thing. Our work is difficult. And because we tread uncharted territory, our progress is steady but slow. We are not here to entertain you with superficial daily videos. We are here to inform you, and to pave the way to new methods of researching our ancient history. Everything we do takes a lot of time. We are not monetized on YouTube, due to the controversiality of our work. That is why we need your support on Patreon. Thank you for watching.